Hey, what's going on guys? Mtashed here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Boltcaster and the Dark Drinker Legendary Swords. Now, they're not named that, but they function identical, or almost identical, to the Dark Drinker and Boltcaster Exotic Swords from Destiny 1. These are extremely good for PvE right now, and I recommend you get them as soon as possible, and even use some of the mods that are available in the artifact as well as on your basic gear to really optimize things. Now, farming these is going to require uh, a little bit of luck early on, but later on you can focus for these and have a much better time grinding these. Uh, the other thing too is you can't actually farm this one in particular until you're much further in the season pass. You can still get it to drop, you can get this one to drop from the season pass, but until you unlock the pulse rifle at like level 45, you can't focus and farm for this one in particular, which is a shame because this thing is badass. So let's get started. So this one right here is Falling Guillotine. Now, this one has Whirlwind Blade, and you're going to notice that these swords only have this one main perk. Now, there's going to be some blocking perks and kind of these other basic ones, but for the most part, you only get one uh, main perk. Now, it has an intrinsic trait where when you press the heavy attack, you're going to spin around with your sword and cleave all the different enemies, and it also bypasses uh, elements of shields. So, a couple things to make this a little bit stronger. Uh, the Enhanced Sword Scavenger is a must-have. It's only one cost. You can throw this on your boots and get extra ammo when you're using your sword. Another thing is you could try to use Oppressive Darkness if you're interested uh, in doing some additional damage. Right before you go in there, you throw a grenade, weaken it, and then you can charge up your, uh, you know, your sword. Or, another good option is if you use something like an Arc uh, piece. You can actually use this bad boy, Bleeding Edge, and you gain a super energy on sword final blows. So if you're trying to generate a bunch of super, you can use that as well, and that's going to be a big help. One more thing. Um, the reserve mods and unflinching mods are pretty basic and pretty average in PvE in a lot of situations. So what I recommend you do is throw on a arc chest and use the Powerful Friends mod, and then use a sword reserves mod. This will give you 70, 70 ammo for your sword, which is like another 15 or something from the base amount, or even 20, depending on the perks you use. So this is amazing. Now you can only use one from what I could tell. I stacked on two. I couldn't get any more ammo. I don't know if there's something going on there, but just use one and you're going to have a nice boost to your mobility as well as some extra reserves. So let's get into this. Let me show you the damage. Okay, so my sword has Whirling Blade. I believe you can also get Vorpal Weapon, which is pretty incredible. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack up my Whirling Blade to times 5, and we're going to attack the Ogre with just the heavy attack. So I'm going to do this, get to times 5, we're going to jump up here, and we're going to do this. Pretty well killing him. Oh wait! We did kill him! Now, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on when you're playing PvE. It gets pretty chaotic. I don't always notice that extra chunk, but it appears to happen every time on this ogre and on this captain. It's like a little extra chunk of damage. I don't use swords a lot, so I don't know why that's happening, but if you are times fiving, you are going to melt any enemy you come across. This thing is nuts. Now, even on times three, one, two, three, and you pop that, you're pretty much going to kill him or kill him. This thing is amazing. It's probably the best PvE hep hep Well, I shouldn't say best. Anarchy is amazing, you know, Xenophage is amazing, but if you can throw down some bubbles, press of darkness, this thing is insanity. It's absolutely insanity. I highly recommend you try this thing out. Uh, you know, uh, look at the damage here. Look at the damage. Now, I haven't tested out multiple rolls of this because, unfortunately, it I can't farm this one yet. I'll show you that in a minute at the end of the video, how to farm this. But mine has Whirling Blade. So there might be some other rolls that are amazing, Vorpal Weapon or something like that. Uh, but I haven't been able to test it. But even with this, just Whirling Blade, insanity. Now let's take a look at the Bolt Caster because this thing is probably just as good. It's just different. So this is Temptation's Hook and this is essentially the Bolt Caster. This one has Whirlwind Blade as well, so it's going to be very similar. I'm going to stack it up, I'm going to let it loose, I'm going to send it down range. 
Now, this one is interesting because it actually launches a projectile. Same thing happens. Uh, it partially bypasses elemental shields. I don't know how much that's going to matter, but let's see the damage here. So we've got our ogre. He's full HP. Let's just stack it on a couple of these trash mobs, and then we'll send it down range to this bad boy, and it's going to look pretty sweet. So we're going to go bop. We're going to go bop. Get this. And a couple stacks here. Whirlwind times five, and then... Pretty good damage. Now, I can send another one down there, and uh, you can send these little baby ones. All right, but these are trash. You're going to want to stack up. You're going to want to make sure you have energy before you send them down range, or they're not going to do much. You want to make sure you've got the AoE uh, damage one. But here's the thing, my friends. Let's say there are a bunch of trash mobs around you, and then there's a big boss enemy down range. You can just kind of stack this up and then situationally or periodically send one down. Attack some more enemies, kill them, send it. What? All right, all right. So you need a little bit more time in between, but you get the idea, okay? Stack up, kill a couple little enemies, and then just <gasps> all the way down there. And it's gonna do some pretty crazy damage. But let me show you what happens when you use it kind of on the same enemy. Uh, you know, you can do this. Absolutely, you can, you can use it as a ranged attack. But you can use it up close and personal as well, and it's going to be just as effective. Let me get some ammo. Let's kill this guy really quick, and uh, I'll reset this. This thing locks on. You can use a close range. You're not going to miss. Um, I think, personally, the Dark Drinker is the better weapon. This one does hit hard, but, like, let's go to times three and use it. He's not quite dying the way the Dark Drinker did. If we stack it up to times five, absolutely, it's going to die. But I find that the Dark Drinker is just more DPS. And I know that it's valuable having the Bolt Caster and being able to send something down range. And it's honestly good to even send into a group of enemies. I do like the weapon. But if we're looking at sheer DPS, if we're looking at overall deliciousness, then I think that the Dark Drinker uh, is going to be a little bit better. I would use a guillotine over this one. But it's still pretty cool and I wanted to show it off. Now, another thing you can do is the new exotic is a, is a damage over time. So, if you go in the season pass here, um, you can you can unlock it in the, in the season pass. I don't remember how to do that. I'm blind, apparently. There we go. So, the Wither Horde. Level 35 if you don't have the season pass thingy. Uh, level 1 if you do. This is a damage over time ability. So, what you could do as well, if you don't want to use Trinity Ghoul with the, uh, with the Catalyst, you can send this onto the enemy, right? You can tick the enemy with this. I'm going to just grab it. Why not? You can tick the enemy with this, and then you can swap to the sword and just eviscerate, like, everything. So let me show you this really quickly, uh, just because I think it's pretty cool. So you can put one on the ground, one on the enemy, and then just anything, anything you fight. Anything you fight is dead. Any boss is going down before they can even blink their damn eyes. So, I thought this was cool. I wanted to show it off. Let's talk about farming these. So, with the new Umbral Engram, you can use a cur <clears throat> So, with the new Umbral Engrams, you can use currency to focus them. If you use this one, it is 50 altered element, and you can focus it to get a weapon. So, you could use this one as a cheap way to gamble on it and try for it, but there's a way to use more to focus what weapons you get. If you look at this one here, it is 100 cost, but you'll get either the Whispering Slab Bow or the Temptation's Hook, aka the Bolt Caster. So if you're trying to farm for a Bolt Caster, you would go and farm Umbral Engrams from different activities or the uh, Contact Public Event, and then you would come here, spend your Altered Element, and you would hope to get as many Temptation Hooks as possible. Now, the same thing goes for the Guillotine. Unfortunately, to do this and farm these, you have to unlock them in the Season Pass. Which means, if you want to get the God Rolled Dark Drinker, you're going to have to put in some time doing bounties and different activities to unlock the Cold Denial before you do this. Now, if you look at the Season Pass, unfortunately, it's decently far in. Now, I hoarded bounties. I'm level 36. Uh, you know, I I've been grinding. I put in crazy hours. So I'm going to get to this relatively fast, but Cold Denial is all the way on 45. So this might take a few days or even a couple of weeks, depending how much you play, before you can unlock this in the Season Pass and farm it. 
Now, if you look earlier on, don't stress too much. At level 30, you can get the Fallen Guillotine, and it's got the Whirling Blade, or the Whirlwind Blade. And that's the one that I've been using, and it's incredible. So even if you're just getting to level 30, you can have this bad boy and dominate the enemies. And there's also a Bolt Caster, um, I believe. Oh no, there, I think you just get a Bolt Caster from a quest, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how I got it. I truly don't know how I got it. Maybe you're just allowed to focus into it and get it. But the Guillotine is going to be, like, super meta. Even if it's just this base one, you're not going to be falling behind. But down the road, if you get that level 45 in the season pass and you want to farm for more, I think you can get like some pretty nutty rolls like Vorpal Weapon, which would make it even better for bosses. So that's pretty much it though, guys. If you want to farm for this, I definitely recommend it. There's a bunch of powerful loadouts you can use with it, and I can't wait to chop up more enemies. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.